הנה מה טוב ומה נעים, שבת אחים גם יחד. הנה מה טוב ומה נעים, שבת אחים גם יחד. הנה מה הטוב, שבת אחים גם יחד. הנה מה הטוב, שבת אחים. Come yachad Behold how good and how pleasant it is For all to dwell together Behold how good and how pleasant it is For all to dwell together In unity In Himahato La 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 In unity In Himahato La 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 Qué lindo es y maravilloso celebrar juntos con hermanos. Qué magnifique y merveilleux celebrer con frères ensemble. You might wonder, why is the rabbi singing when we have a cantorial soloist? Why is he singing in these different languages? That is because, my friends, Shabbat is the celebration of the origins, not just of the Jewish people, not just of English speakers, but of all people and all living things and all creation. And therefore, we are called upon to expand our horizons and to embrace all people as our brothers. Shabbat celebrates creation. And as we celebrate the new year, we get a new chance to start anew. And it's a brand new start to celebrate the earth and also to celebrate our lives. I hope that the resolutions that we make this year will not be like those of years past, which go in one year and out the other, but I hope we will be resolute in our resolutions. And I hope that we will resolve to truly learn from our past and make this year better. You know, our nation and our world could use a brand new start and our lives could as well. There's a big difference between the secular New Year and the Jewish New Year. On the secular New Year, they have a big celebration. On the Jewish year, we have cerebration. We use our cerebellum to try to improve our lives and the world. In the secular New Year, they have revelry. But in the Jewish year, we have reverie, exp expressing reverence for our lives and the lives of others and for the wonderful planet that we have. On the secular New Year, they have a noisemaker, which just makes noise for no other purpose than to cause some type of cacophony. On the Jewish New Year, we have a shofar. This is a noise with a purpose. This is a call to action to do battle against the dark forces in the world and in our lives. It's a call to conscience. It's a call to wake up from your slumber and really make this year the best and to show appreciation for this incredible gift of life that we have for another year. This shofar, like all others, is hollow. And that way the wind can pass right through it. In Hebrew, the word for wind is ruach. And it's also the word for spirit. And for us to channel the great spirit, the spiritual energy that's alive in us and in our ancestors and in this world, our souls must be pure. We must remove all the clutter from this terrible year of 2020 so that we can purify ourselves and move forward without all the clutter of the past. I hope that we will be successful in this battle and that we will remember the wonderful ideals of our past as we approach the future and also learn to live and enjoy the present. We are thrilled this Shabbat to have the candle lighting led for us by Gloria and Merle Bruskin celebrating their 66th year of joining forces as a team to bring out the best in each other and to share their love with others. Now we also have Susan and David Cohen who are going to be leading us in the Kiddush. I also want to give a shout out to Devin, a new member who joined all the way from Hawaii. Aloha, Devin. And I hope you will inspire other people to recognize that wherever you are throughout the world, 
you can join with Lador Vador as we engage in the exciting new version of Judaism that we put forth in this new year in which we unite Judaism and science and reality and spirituality and helping other people join with us in this wonderful enterprise as we build the future of Judaism today. And now, let the celebration begin. Shabbat Shalom and a Happy New Year to all. As these Shabbat candles give light to all who behold them, so may we by our lives give light to all who behold us. As their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled lights, so may we in our own way be among those who kindle light. The blessing for the candles. Baruch Atua Adonai, Eloheinu Melch Olam. I share Kedushano with us, Beis Dov, Ritzivano, Bahalit Ner Shel Shabbat. May we be blessed with joy, may we be blessed with light, and may we be blessed with peace. Shabbat Shalom. Today we have a special day. It's our 66th wedding anniversary. Unfortunately, because of the virus, we have to spend it by ourselves without our children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. But hopefully next year we'll all be together. Shalom. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kidshanu B'mitzvotav V'tzivanu Lehad Likner Lehad Likner Shabbat Shalom and Happy New Year. The beginning of Shabbat is marked by reciting a benediction sanctifying the day. Kiddush, which means sanctification, is the prayer recited over the wine through which Jews proclaim the uniqueness of Shabbat. Sweet wine has long been used to make Shabbat just a little sweeter. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech olam, borei pri agafen. Wishing to everyone a happy new year, a safe and healthy new year. I hope that we get to meet Together once again, Shabbat Shalom. Well, 2020 has been some year, and we're all really looking forward to 2021, where we have vaccinations and the pandemic will be over, and we'll all get to spend time together. It will be a wonderful year for us. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Oh uh -huh.
At Lador Bador, we approach the prayers of our traditions in a slightly different manner. We cherish our traditions and our prayers, but we view them slightly differently. It's been said that if we're going to wait around for a supernatural power to solve our problems, then we haven't got a prayer. Prayer should summon the godly within us and within all others as we express common cause, common ideals and hopes and dreams for the future as we enter 2021. It's also said that if our prayers are not based on reality, if they're just based on illusions and delusions, we haven't got a prayer. We must be grounded in reality and in science. And so the prayers that we offer are consistent with what is true and what is real. And one thing we know for a fact, every single person on planet Earth began from a single cell. And we somehow knew intuitively how to grow our cells from a cell to a hundred trillion cells with a mind and with sense organs that can see and hear and think and feel and do and love. This is an incredible miracle. So when we offer these prayers, we seek to tap into the creative power within us all and within all living things and within the entire cosmos. Let us tap into that power that is inside of us all, that has led to us all, and that can change and transform what is into what could be. Let us also give thanks for all the blessings that we have, for all the gifts with which we've been endowed just by being born and being born on planet Earth and being born to a beautiful Jewish heritage which believes in the power that we have to change for the better, to assess our lives and to improve. We now enter into some Jewish prayers from our wonderful Jewish heritage. <laughs> Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Shema Yisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad If you're lost, you feel afraid And you don't know what to say Then listen Listen to our God Is there a question on your mind? Is the answer hard to find? Then listen Listen to our God Listen with all your heart and soul And with all of your mind Write them and learn them and teach them well Every morning and night Close your eyes and listen
נשמת כוחי תברך את שמך, אדוני אלוהינו. נשמת כוחי תברך את שמך, אדוני אלוהינו. Every living soul will bless you. And all will sing your songs With every breath of life We'll find where we belong Where hearts, our souls and minds Together flow as one The river of life's connection In all of us it runs נשמת כוחי תברך את שמך, always singing life song. נשמת כוחי תברך את שמך, all our sounds are your songs. Listen, do you hear it? שמא. There is nothing like you. None to compare With visionary direction You'll guide us to you nowhere In time, space, dimensions We'll all get there In time we'll all get there In time we'll all be here נשמת כוחי תברך את שמך, always singing life song. נשמת כוחי תברך את שמך, all our sounds are your songs. Listen, do you hear it? שמה אדוני, שפתי תפתח, ופי יגיד תהילתך. אדוני, open my lips, that my mouth may declare your praise. ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו, ואלוהי אבותינו ואימותינו, אלוהי אברהם, אלוהי יצחק. אלוהי יעקב, אלוהי שרה, אלוהי רבקה, אלוהי רחל, אלוהי לאה, האל הגדול, הגיבור והנורא, אל העליון, גומל חסדים טובים וקונה הכל, וזוכר חסדי אבות ואימהות, ומביא גאולה לבני בניהם, למען שמו. באהבה, מלך עוזר ומושיע ומגן. ברוך אתה אדוני, מגן אברהם ועזרת שרה. We're now going to enter into a few moments of silent meditation. I hope this is just a prelude or a precursor to what we're going to be doing throughout this month of January. We should reflect upon the past so that we can build a better future while also enjoying all the gifts that we have in the present. Let us reflect upon our good fortune, especially the good fortune we have to not only live in America and live on this incredible planet Earth, but also to have so many people who care for us and help us in ways that we don't even know, first responders, grocers, farmers, people who provide all of our necessities. These people not only make our lives better, they make our lives possible. They're indispensable. We count on the service of so many other people in order to live and to enjoy all the things that we do in this country. Let us also reflect in these few moments and also throughout this month and this year. Let us reflect on our ability that we have. to bring a smile to the face of others and to improve the world and to recall that when we bring a smile to others, we bring a smile to ourselves. When we improve the world, we improve our own lives. The more joy and love and hope and inspiration we share, the more we have in our heart. Let us meditate on how we could be of service 
and let us meditate on all the blessings that we've received and let us meditate on how we can help to bring about a world of joy, of peace, of shalom. Amen. of light so we are blessed as we bless the source of life so we are blessed and the blessing gives us strength and makes our visions clear and the blessing gives us peace and the courage to dare as we source of life so we are blessed as we bless the source of light so we are blessed our Torah reading this Shabbat is from the last chapter of the book of Genesis the book of Genesis starts out with the creation of the world and ends up with the creation of the Jewish people here we have Jacob on his deathbed, as his days are numbered, and he is now sharing with all of his progeny, with his children, the blessings for the future and also his prognosis of what is to come. It is believed that when a sage is dying, they're able to see and to peer into the future, and therefore their words take on great significance. Jacob here is sharing with all of his children what he expects in the future. Very, very similar to what we do on New Year's Day as we try to look into the future to see what awaits us and to plan for a better and brighter tomorrow. And so he is now in the chapter and the verse that I'll be reading from sharing with his son Judah, from which we get the word and the name Judaism, what he envisions for Judah's future. Before we read from the Torah, we recite the blessing. Baruch Hu et Adonai HaMavorach Baruch Adonai HaMavorach Le'olam Vohed Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachar Banu Mikol Hamim Venatan Lanu et Torato Baruch Atah Adonai Noten HaTorah Yehuda ata yuducha achecha. There's a play on words of Judah, which means graciousness or gratitude and blessings. He says, Judah, 
you are going to be the blessed one, the most gracious one of the Jewish people. Yadcha ve'ochef avicha yishtachavu lecha. And your enemies you will have by the throat, and they will bow down to you. V'nei avicha gul al ye Yehuda. Among the children of your father, you will be the roar of the lion. And the Jewish people were sometimes known as the lion of Judah. Judah is equated with the lion. And the word for roar here is an onomatopoeia, which is a word that sounds like what it means. The word for roar is gur. It's kind of like growl. You will be the growl of the lion, or the tip at the head of the sphere. And you will be like the king of the jungle, as a lion, and who shall seek to defy you? And this is aligned with messianic implications. The scepter will never depart from Judah, nor from the staff from beneath your feet. This line has different translations. It, what it means is that until all the people have paid tribute to you, but it also could mean Ad ki yavo Shiloh. Shiloh or Shiloh was a place in Judea where outside of Jerusalem, before Jerusalem became the center of Jewish religion, it was a place where people built altars and it was a, a, a place, a religious center for the Jewish people, Shiloh. And so the Christians interpret this to mean that Judah will be in control, will be the, the head of the Jewish people until Shiloh comes, which they interpret to mean until the coming of the Messiah. And you will be prosperous and will lead the Jews to prosperity in the Holy Land. The blessing after the Torah. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Asher natan lanu tuchat emet V'chayi olam nata bitochenu Baruch ata Adonai Noten ha-Torah Amen Chazak, chazak Venit chazik. We recite this after the reading of a chapter of the Torah. It means, may you go from strength to strength and be strengthened by the truth and the teachings of the Torah. Amen. And on this Shabbat, I am happy to announce that Lador Vador will begin a new practice where every Shabbat we will devote our service to another charity this month to Peggy Adams which is a voice for the voiceless, helping animals to find homes and helping to care for all defenseless living things. I hope you'll contribute to us, Lador Vador. 20% of all donations will go to this wonderful organization, which has volunteers who are doing God's work, volunteers who care for the least of us, the ones who need our help so much, defenseless animals. It's a pleasure to work with them and to devote our service every month to another good cause. Many people think that Abraham Lincoln was actually Jewish. His name Abraham, of course, is a Jewish name. He came from a part of England where the Jews were massacred and exterminated and forced into hiding. And so many people think that there were people who were Jewish who hid their Judaism. The name Lincoln could be looked at as Lynn Cohen. And so people think that perhaps he was Jewish, but also his message and his mission was to bring about unity, which is reflected in the unity of the Shema, we're all one, and also to abolish 
slavery, which is one of the main mandates of the Jewish people. You were slaves in Egypt, therefore remember the heart of the stranger and the slave, and we've been mandated to free them, as Lincoln did. And Lincoln once had a joke. He said, some people have called me two-faced. He said, if I was two-faced, do you think I'd be wearing this one? <laughs> and another joke that he said is that when he was in court one day, he argued a position, and then later on in the same day, he was arguing another case, and the judge said to him, Mr. Lincoln, this morning you argued a proposition, and now this afternoon you're arguing the exact opposite. How can you stand here and say two different things? And he said, well, I've had time to think about it. That's what we're here to do today. Uh, we're here on this Shabbat, and on this New Year's Day, and this new month, and new year. We're here to think about it, to think about how we can change for the better. And we also remember the Roman god Janus, after whom January is named, who was two-faced. One face looked back into the past, while the other face simultaneously looked to the future. That's what we're called upon to do today. There is so much in the past, in 2020, that we can learn from. If we learn nothing from all the tragedies and suffering of 2020, then indeed it will be even more horrific and more terrifying than it was. But if we can learn from it, if we can salvage something good, at least we can derive something of benefit from the terrible year that we've had. And we, we need to remember with Abraham Lincoln that during the terrible years of slavery, there were some religious institutions, some churches that actually supported slavery, and they said that it was biblically based. There were other churches that fought against slavery and other synagogues that worked against it to liberate people. And probably the vast majority of churches and synagogues were silent. And that is the most shameful of all, perhaps. You know, it was Joachim Prinz, a refugee from Nazi Germany, who said, I learned much from living under the Nazis. But the thing that was the most important lesson that I learned is that silence of all the crimes is the most shameful, the most despicable, the most immoral of all. Because silence leads to cruelty and to violence. And therefore, the lesson he learned was to speak up. And so it's time for all of us as Jews, or if we're not Jewish, as people of conscience, to learn from the past and speak up. In 2020, we saw what happens when you have leaders who are doing the wrong thing and taking us in the wrong direction and people don't speak up. Some of them say, Rabbi, you have no business speaking out. Stick to your prayers. Fortunately, Moses, the prophets of Judaism and Jewish sages, didn't take that advice. They all spoke up and they all spoke out against what was going on and against the leaders. So we must hold all of our leaders accountable of whatever party they are. And we must learn from our past. And another thing that I'd like to share with you today is this amazing movie, Wonder Woman, which stars an Israeli actress who is an inspiration to Jewish girls and to all girls and all women everywhere of the power within every one of us, including women. She is a role model. And what was the lesson? I'm not going to give away the movie, but I will recommend that you watch it. But the lesson is all about truth, because it says that truth is above everything. Truth is above any person, any government, any philosophy. It all, everything has to be grounded in truth. And that is why the Jewish people are committed to two main goals, emet vatsidik. Emet is truth and tzedek is righteousness. You cannot have righteousness if we don't have the truth. We cannot have morality if it is not based on science and, and what is really going on. And so we must be grounded in truth. And the best source of truth that we have is science. That's why Judaism merges and unites these two great revelations, science and religion, because together they are a powerful force for good. And we also must unite science and government. Government actions must be based on science, and that is the lesson of 2020. If you don't listen to the scientists and the doctors, and you call a pandemic a hoax, the pandemic is not fooled, it is not bullied, it is not intimidated. 
If you say it's going to go away, it, it does not care. It strikes indiscriminately. This is just a foreshadowing of something far more horrendous even than the coronavirus, climate change. We must unite in the year 2021 behind a president who says he's going to make that a priority. We must base our actions on truth, and the truth is that our planet is on life support. It's in trouble. It will require drastic, concerted, global action. And I hope in this year we'll learn from that great Israeli actress from Wonder Woman to base everything on truth in the movie also, without giving it away. It talks about the great harm that comes, not only from a leader who craves power and who is megalomaniacal about seeking power, but also how he robs all the people who follow him of their humanity and what is most important to them in order to cede their power to him. Let us learn from this movie. Let us learn from our past. Let us learn from Abraham Lincoln, someone who cared so much about unity, who gave everything to bring this country together and to solve this country's vexatious problems. Let us also learn from Joseph in the Torah reading. Joseph, who could see into the future, who even though they were living at a time when Egypt was doing well, said, look into the future. It won't always be like this. There are dark times ahead. We must prepare. That's what we must do as a world global community, as a Jewish community, leading the world in morality and in ethics and leading the world into the next century. The world needs Jewish seichel, Jewish intelligence, Jewish wisdom, our indomitable spirit, our survival skills. Let us all unite as Jews. Let us make a commitment this year that all Jews will be one, one powerful force for change for the better, united behind emet batzedek, truth and righteousness. For together, if the Jewish people galvanize the world community and the spiritual community, we can have a spiritual transformation to actually take this world in a new direction, a better direction in 2021. Remember, juntos unidos, jamás vencidos. Together, united, we will never be divided. Toujours unis, nous sommes bénis. If we are all united, we will be blessed. As the Haitian flag says, l'union fait la force. There is strength in unity. And now, I am thrilled to share with you one of the most inspiring videos I've ever seen that talks about this message. A father sharing with his son the necessity to do what we do every Shabbat and on this new year, to reflect upon the past in order to learn and to build a brighter future. Shabbat Shalom. <sighs> Tell me the one about the virus again, then I'll go to bed. But my boy, you're growing weary, sleepy thoughts about your head. Please, that one's my favorite. I promise just once more. <laughs> okay, snuggle down, my boy, though I know you know full well. The story starts before then in a world I once would dwell. It was a world of waste and wonder, of poverty and plenty, back before we understood why hindsight's 2020. You see, the people came up with companies to trade across all lands, but they swelled and got much bigger than we ever could have planned. We'd always had our wants, but now it got so quick. You could have anything you dreamed of in a day and with a click. We noticed families had stopped talking. That's not to say they never spoke, but the meaning must have melted and the work-life balance broke. And the children's eyes grew squarer and every toddler had a phone. They filtered out the imperfections, but amidst the noise, they felt alone. And every day the skies grew thicker till you couldn't see the stars. So we flew in planes to find them, while down below, we filled our cars. We'd drive around all day in circles. We'd forgotten how to run. We swapped the grass for tarmac, shrunk the parks till there were none. We filled the sea with plastic, 
because our waste was never capped. Until each day when you went fishing, you'd pull them out, already wrapped. And while we drank and smoked and gambled, our leaders taught us why. It's best to not upset the lobbies. More convenient to die. But then in 2020, a new virus came our way. The governments reacted and told us all to hide away. But while we all were hidden, amidst the fear and all the while, the people dusted off their instincts. They remembered how to smile. They started clapping to say thank you and calling up their mums. And while the car keys gathered dust, they would look forward to their runs. And with the skies less full of voyagers, the earth began to breathe and the beaches bore new wildlife that scuttled off into the seas. Some people started dancing, some were singing, some were baking. We'd grown so used to bad news, but some good news was in the making. And so when we found the cure and were allowed to go outside, we all preferred the world we found to the one we'd left behind. Old habits became extinct and they made way for the new and every simple act of kindness was now given its due. But why did it take a virus to bring the people back together? Well, sometimes you've got to get sick, my boy, before you start feeling better. Now lie down and dream of tomorrow and all the things that we can do. And who knows, if you dream hard enough, maybe some of them will come true. We now call it the Great Realisation. And yes, since then, there have been many. But that's the story of how it started and why hindsight's 2020. Alenu le shabach la don ha kol, la teid kedula le otzer breshit, shelo ha sang ki ye aratzot, velo ho samanu ki mishpichot adama. Shelo sam chelkenu kohem, vegohur aleinu kechol hamonam. Vaanachnu korim, umishtachavim umodim. Lifne melech, malche hamlachim, hakadosh baharuchu. Venemar, vehaye Adonai, lemelech. Al kol ha'aretz, bayom ha'hu, bayom ha'hu, ye Adonai echad, u'shemo, u'shemo, u'shemo echad. It's now time for us to reflect upon the lives of our loved ones who are no longer here. As we recite the Kaddish, hope that all of us will be inspired by the love of our parents and grandparents and dear ones who may not be with us physically, but spiritually who are a very strong and influential part of who we are. Now, some of us don't believe in a metaphysical afterlife where souls go. But I'll tell you one thing that we can believe in that is based on hard truth and reality. That our ancestors, our parents, our grandparents can live again within us as we help to make their memory a blessing. And we too can be given new life. We can imagine ourselves as if we've somehow passed away, but we're given a chance to come back. What would we do? If we were able to come back right now and live life anew, that's how we should view this new year. We've been given another year of life. We shouldn't wait until we're on our deathbed to think, oh, if only I had done this. You know, what we regret most is not so much the mistakes we've made, but the things that we never even tried. Let us give ourselves new life and let our ancestors and our loved ones live again through us as we recite the Kaddish. Yiskedal v'yiskedash shemer abba, v'yomad yivrach russe v'yomnich machute, v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayed v'chol beis Yisrael, v'agala v'zman kari v'imru, amen. Yehe shemer abba mivorach le'olam ulmei ulmaya, 
ויס בורח ויס טבח ויס פועור ויס חומם ויס נעשה ויס הדר ויס הלב ויס הלל שמר כדשע בריחו. לאלה מנקור ברכוסה ושירוסה. תשפכוסה ונחמסה דאמירון ויומה ואמרו אמן. יהי שלום הרבה מן שמיא וחיים עלינו ועקו ישראל ואמרו אמן. עושה שלום במרומיו. הוא יעשה שלום עלינו ויעקו ישראל ויאמרו אמן. May the source of peace and comfort bring peace and comfort to all who mourn. And may we be that source of peace and comfort for others. And let us say, אמן. שבת שלום and a very happy and healthy new year 2021. Thank you to all who participated and helped to create this wonderful and special New Year's Day Shabbat for us. We're thrilled that you're all viewing this Shabbat and hope that you're enjoying the words, the prayers, the songs, the music, and the videos. Lador Vidor offers a very unique and special Judaism. We're calling it inspirational Judaism. Our goal is is to unite Jews of all denominations and persuasions together. We're a Judaism that can appeal universally. We honor traditions, respect science, and celebrate spirituality. We welcome you to join us as we build the Judaism of tomorrow, today at Lador Vador. Last weekend, we offered our very first more traditional Shabbat morning service at Lador Vador, led for us by cantorial soloist Andrew Sussman and Rabbi Barry Silver. We intend to hold these once per month, and the next two are scheduled January 30th and February 27th. We hope we'll see you there. These live Zoom services go into more depth with the Shabbat prayers. We welcome one and all to join in on these additional Shabbat morning services, as well as our Friday evening Shabbat services that you're watching now. We invite you to see last week's service, if you missed it, on our YouTube channel. Check it out. We hope you'll enjoy it. We look forward each week to our weekly chats with two rabbis, Rabbi Barry Silver and Rabbi Zvi Khan, each Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. on Zoom. We welcome you to take part in these lovely discussions about the upcoming Torah Parsha and more. We hope you'll join us tonight at our Zoom and Schmooze at 8.30 p.m. when we continue our celebration of Shabbat and the new year 2021 together. This evening, we're going to present a wonderful video about Jewish personalities in music. Obtain the links for all of our services and our programs from our ladorvador.org website and through our email newsletter, The Voice. We wish you all a wonderful year filled with love, laughter, good health, being safe, vaccines for one and all, and an end to this horrendous pandemic. Shabbat Shalom and Happy New Year 2021 with love from Lador Vador.
Yivarecha Charonai V'yishmarecha. May you be blessed and preserved in this brand new year. May the light of love shine upon us all and may we overcome the darkness of the past year and emerge into a brand new light of the future. May you be lifted up by standing on the shoulders of giants of our ancestors, our parents, and our dear ones in order to get a glimpse and a view of a brand new world and a brand new year so that we can make 2020 one, a turning point, an inflection point, as together we write the next chapter of history. And let that chapter be filled with wonderful stories of grandeur and of heroism and of courage and of blessings. Amen. Ulecho Israel. Let there be peace on earth, and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be.